Welcome to the complete collection of Scottie Pippen's greatest stories told by NBA players and legends. If you have missed any of the other episodes within this series, there's a playlist link on the top right of your screen and down in the description box down below. If you click on that link, you will see all the NBA players that have been completed so far. I won't keep you waiting, all that I'll ask is that these videos do take a long time to edit, so I'd greatly appreciate if you guys could hit that like button, let's aim for a thousand likes for the next episode, comment down below which player you would like to see next, and if you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Without further ado, welcome to the complete collection of Scottie Pippen's greatest stories told by NBA players and legends. Please tell me about that story behind the moment when you're on the court, you're trash talking back and forth with Scottie Pippen after he dunks on Patrick Ewing. You feel that was your most disrespectful dunk? Yes, I definitely feel that. Myers for Pippen. Oh, a faithful Scottie Pippen in the face of Patrick Ewing, who did not appreciate it. Here's the situation. You weren't much of a talker, but there were a couple of instances in your career that are really memorable. Ooh. There was I this had one. moments where I was, I was able to stand on a few people's head, step over, <laughs> them, whatever you but want. But then you talked to Spike Lee afterward. What were y'all talking about? Oh! Oh! I bet you foul! 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 What is that? You oh! walk like a muff! I never, ever had any in a play with her athlete before like that ever i remember that dunk i think i was so frustrated to play before that that i didn't get a foul or something that uh i don't know i i felt like i could touch the roof and i just sort of felt patrick falling and he tried to gray out me and i didn't do anything i mean it, it looks worse than what it is but uh I just tried to release his arm so his momentum would just let him fall back so he wouldn't pull me down. And my momentum was still coming towards him and I ended up sort of just walking all on top of him. I was yelling at the ref to call a tech because that was taunting the way he stood over Patrick. I said something that I wouldn't want to repeat here. <laughs> but uh, if you can get a professional lip reader, maybe she can uh, figure it out. Ewing is set, Scotty is set. It's like, okay, let's take the elevator up. Ewing goes to the 10th floor, Scotty went to the 11th. That's it. <laughs> what stands out most in my mind about that is that uh, Pippen just steps over Ewing, and this really symbolized that entire period of, and the series of uh, magnificent games between the Bulls and the Knicks who really detested each other. Scotty kind of throws him to the ground a little bit. And it's almost like, down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. That's what everyone at home was saying. Down goes Ewing. Down goes Ewing. And Scotty knew exactly what he was doing, too, because to stand over him and look at him. In basketball, that's the worst you can, thing you can do. That's not nice, Scotty. That's not a nice thing. It was kind of that little moment where Spike kind of like, he wasn't my hero then. That's a technical foul. He's like Ali, he's like Ali standing over listening. You can't do that. And still, Patrick Ewing, do not speak to me because of that dunk. Oh, <laughs> you, 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 right. you. You, did you have that recording? So still, no, I didn't still, have that in there. Still Put still that in the next <laughs> edition. Of the See? See, Patrick Ewing would not pick you for he'll his All-Star team if that ever came up. He won't up. speak to me, but he'll kind of walk up and give me a little punch <laughs> in, in, in the side. <laughs> you know, he was my hero for a long time, watching about them Nick sidelines and things. But when he came into my house and was talking trash, I just told what? him. Take a seat. Take a seat. <laughs> all right, all right. Step back, step back. Please step back. <laughs> hey, let's go, baby. This is the one. Let's do this. We got to jump out of the block quick and be smart on the offense today. Let's go. Come on. What time is it? Can you tell me a little bit about Scottie Pippen and how that whole uh, relationship evolved and how you push Scottie Pippen? Uh, well, not just push Scottie Pippen, Scottie Pippen pushed me. I mean, it was this big brother, little brother scenario. Scottie Pippen, who was the second most important person in providing a dynasty in one of the greatest sporting runs that has ever happened that brought joy to millions and millions of people. In all the videos, you never just saw me. You saw Scottie Pippen. Every championship I won. I 
I knew the hard work that it took to get to that level. And if we wanted to get from point A to point B to point Z, then I'm gonna have to pull this guy along. We're gonna have to find a way to coexist. We're gonna have to find a way to challenge each other. It is obvious that Scottie Pippen looks back on those years primarily with bitterness. You could see it. You could see it in his face. You could hear it in his voice. Watching you and Michael on the court, it looked like two best friends out there just crushing everybody. What was your relationship like off the court? <laughs> it wasn't what you saw on the court. We always will have that respect uh, for each other, but our friendship is not where people see it on TV think it is. Do you think that Michael Jordan would be as successful without you? No, but I don't think I would be successful without him. I think we both complemented each other in a lot of different ways, and uh, we kind of competed and pushed each other to be great. To have been a part of something that special and to have been as, as, as integral to it as he was and to not look back on it in a joyous way, I, I just, it makes me sad. The stuff he said about Michael and Phil Jackson, I think if you won six championships together, there's a bond there. I mean, you didn't win one lucky championship. You won six. As Michael, Scotty, Phil, and Jerry Krause are the only people who were there for all six of those championships. Hypothetically, if you won one championship, there's guys on the team you probably not that close with. Somebody got traded there for the year and or they got traded afterwards. But if you win six championships together, like I said, I don't know, but there's gotta be a special bond. There's gotta be a special bond. I mean, that's an, an amazing accomplishment. And for you to trash the greatest player ever, in my opinion, I know Michael, Michael ain't never gonna forgive him. And of course, it was all about Michael first and foremost. He's the greatest ever. But Scottie Pippen, I think, feels as though he's remembered more for being Jordan's sidekick than he is for being remembered as a, as a genuinely great all-time player in his own right. I always admired Scottie Pippen and his game and appreciated him. And then I thought about something. He's the most disrespected all-time great player in any sport that any game has seen. Interesting is the most disrespected superstar ever. And there's a part of me that sort of thinks that. It's not even close. Michael Jordan didn't win any championships without Scottie Pippen. But let me tell you why the public gets to denounce the role of Scottie Pippen. Two reasons. One, we always want to give the best player all of the credit. Of course. Like, I think younger generations of basketball fans, I'll use, you know, my son as an example. He's 18 years old. He knows everything there is to know about Michael Jordan, and he knows Scottie Pippen was a really good player who played with him. Because if you're not old enough to have seen it, then maybe you don't realize it, and maybe history hasn't done a good enough job of telling Scottie's story. And the last dance was Michael's telling of that story. And, right. and Michael Jordan is the best player, not just of on the all team, time. all time. So, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. so we're gonna give him all the credit. Like, when you look back at those championship runs, and this is the dubious thing I wanted to show you. He doesn't have like the signature moment. It was on him when MJ left to play the MVP level, lead the team. They got a bad call against the Knicks or they would have advanced a lot further. Starks has to kick it back out. Davis for the win. He's fouled and fouled him with 2.1 left. He cannot believe it. Wow. First of all, on Chicago to play the ball. Now right there from our angle, how can we tell? Uh, it, it's impossible. Scotty Pippen did not think that he fouled. Phil Jackson did not think. When you look at Michael Jordan, the Bulls' success in the playoffs pre Scotty Pippen, and then you look at post Scotty Pippen, look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you see that, um, that win loss record there, Jay? Mm -hmm. Was that one win without Scotty in the playoffs? With three championship rings, a gold medal, and three All Star selections, Scotty had seemed to leave the shadow of obscurity far behind him. But no matter how much he achieved, he found himself constantly eclipsed by his more famous teammate. The years that I've played alongside Michael has uh, definitely been years that I've, to some degree, been overshadowed. People have said, I'm not all-star, I'm just riding Michael's coattail. But just prior to the 94 season, all that suddenly changed when Jordan stunningly would announce his retirement. 
this was an opportunity with Michael's departure for me to really uh, step forth and show some leadership. Oh, he has been unstoppable in MVP performance. Pippen, beautiful jump hook. Pippen would make the most of his opportunity, leading his team to 55 wins and an all-star MVP. Finally, he was well on his way to garnering the recognition he deserved. You know, I think uh, when uh, Michael got a chance to retire, uh, you got a chance to see Scottie Pippen's offensive game. There was a period of time where the world recognized the greatness of Michael Jordan and questioned if that greatness could now translate to winning. And Michael, and this is, I don't mean this as in disrespect, but Michael is always the hero of his story. <laughs> and he deserves to be. He was the best player ever. But then I will say, so I looked up, so ESPN did a list of the top players in history. It came out in 2020, so it's not that long ago, of the greatest players ever, the top 100 players in NBA history. And I thought to myself, where did we put Scotty? I couldn't remember where we put Scotty. And as it turns out, we put Scotty at number 21. I think that's pretty good. I think that's about right. 21st in the list of all-time greats. You're talking about... In the whole history of basketball, we're only saying 20 players were better. He had all of the tools. Was he the best at, at, at one of them? Possibly not. But there's no one in the league that could say they had every tool that he had. Antonio Hart. Oh, oh, I saw every second of this. I think he was better. He is immediately behind names like Kevin Garnett, Moses Malone, and Jerry West. Now, we could quibble over Scotty versus KG, but overall, what I'm trying to say is I think this is a very fair place to put him. So at least the, the, the authoritative history of this stuff, I think his place is being appreciated. I think that what's happened is in a social media world, which is dominated primarily by younger people who are not old enough to have seen him play, I don't think people give Scotty his due. Did, did you three guys believe that Scotty was portrayed accurately? Because friends of mine who are friends with Scotty from the Chicago area have talked to him and he said, no, I think it was bullshit how I was portrayed. Do you guys believe Scotty was portrayed fairly and accurately? You know, for me, for me, I was, uh, and I, I'm still kind of upset about it because I know the type of brother that Scotty is. So for me, I didn't like how he was portrayed and I felt like, you know, it was some, I don't understand the reasoning behind it. I'm still trying to figure that out, that, you know, without Scotty, MJ would not have won. You know, Scotty, I think Scotty's got a big heart. Scotty, uh, you know, when I first got to the Bulls, he, uh, he wasn't a great shooter, skinny, extraordinarily talented. So everything he had, he worked for. Like I said, it was one man's uh, show, and that's what they saw. But uh, but that's not really reality. Horse, it was straight up bullshit. How they portrayed uh, Scott? That documentary they call him. Well, MJ called him selfish. That's some BS. That's straight up BS. If it wasn't for Scottie Pippen, there would be no six championship. I'm telling you right now, guys. I mean. The first championship, uh, with, I think MJ got in foul trouble with uh, against with, against the Lake, Lakers and Magic. Who came to the rescue? Number thirty-three, Scottie Pippen. To putting Pippen on Magic Johnson rather than Michael Jordan. Although Magic Johnson's the greatest point guard I've ever seen, and Scottie Pippen was picking Magic Johnson up full court. Nobody did that. Scottie accepted that challenge, and I knew what Scottie was going to do. I see it in practice all the time. He gets up in your face and he harasses you, and Pip never let him get started. Going into the Lakers series. Michael had picked up two fouls early, and so it became necessary. I knew that I could cause him a lot of problems. I had watched Magic my whole career and even before my career, so I knew the style of player he was, and I knew what I could do to prohibit him from being as effective on the basketball court as he had been throughout his career. Scotty gave me some problems and he made it a little tougher for us to get into our offense. And so it was a smart move on their side. Michael then was able to gamble a little bit at times against the passing lane. So we found a little thing that really disrupted their tempo. And sure enough, they just dominated from then on. 
And the Chicago Bulls have won their first ever NBA championship. Scotty Pippen. I don't think people recognize just how great he was and that he was historically much, much better than just the second best player on Michael Jordan's teams. Uh, there was a famous clip of Kobe watching you. He didn't watch you dribble. He didn't watch you do anything. He just watched your foot speed over and over and over again. If I'm a young player coming into the league today, I would really focus on the defensive end of the floor and look at Scottie Pippen. I mean, this guy was a genius. It's crazy, man. I love Scottie Pippen, bro. Really? Yeah, Scotty was like the shit. Like, I mean, obviously MJ was crazy, but like Scotty Pippen and Penny Hardaway was like my two, because I seen myself in them. Going in, I'm looking to go in and play probably the three position, but someday I want to be able to work my way into the point guard position. See, Scotty is such an unselfish player. He's he's the greatest all around player in the NBA right now. And uh, really, oh, he's absolutely terrific. People get a chance to watch him every night. But I mean, compared to Jordan, you oh, Michael's a, Michael's a terrific player. I'm, I'm not taking anything about the, away from Michael, but Scotty is a rebounder, as a passer, as a defender, and as you know, the whole complete package. His ball pressure, playing passing lanes, blocking shots, taking charges, and he played with a passion on the defensive end of the floor. Like, no, this is the most exciting part of the game to me. Kobe really idolized the way that I played the game, the way that I defended, and you know, a lot of it he started to call me um, after I retired and to ask questions about different situations, how you would guard certain people, what kind of footwork would you do this. That was a big challenge for me when I first came in at 18, 19 years old was playing the post defense because I never had to do it. That whole summer, I, I just studied it and studied it and studied it and didn't become good at it. I wanted it to become a strength. The teams were afraid to post me up because I might knock the ball loose or create a turnover situation. So that's yeah, something I had to had to study. Picking your, your brain to enhance his ability out on the basketball court. Scotty knows what's coming there right now. This is unbelievable. Look at all the ground this guy covers. Here, down, there. Like I saw myself and Pippen get everybody involved, defend all type of positions. He's that rare guy who can literally do everything. He's our point guard, unbelievable defender. He's a great rebounder. He's got every skill imaginable. He's a complete player. The best versatile all-around player in the game today. Scotty wanted to play everybody, and he did play everybody. And one thing great about him, he could play all the positions. Does a lot of things out there in the basketball court that it's, is uh, terrific, and he can lead a team very well. And he can get 10, 12 points and 10 assists and 10 rebounds and really be the determining factor. Tall guards, point forward. It wasn't until Scotty came along with this point forward you know, mentality that Michael could go up, they could send Michael up, and now you draw the defense back, because the defense was always up waiting for Michael. Now with Scotty, you know, Michael could go down, draw the defense, and now Scotty could bring it up and be the facilitator. And that really was the turning point that changed the offense for the Bulls when Scotty could take that role and Michael could trust him to take that role. If I can learn how to cut angles off like Scotty, be aggressive on the defensive end of the floor like Scotty, I think that'll just take my game and the team that drafts me to an entirely different level. What about in 1997? This is the, to me, this is one of the most famous ones of all time. In the finals, Carmelo at the free throw line. It was a Sunday. What did you say? Well, this is an easy one. I had my brother in town. My brother was a postman. Uh huh. So Carmelo is at the line. The game is on the line and. Now you said something to Carl Malone just before he shot those free throws. You guys are close friends. What did you say to him to throw him off? You know, I just kind of whispered in his ear that the mailman doesn't deliver on Sunday. <laughs> All right, guys. If he wants to stop you from scoring a bucket, he stop you from scoring a bucket. I said the mailman doesn't deliver on a Sunday. <laughs> he missed the foul shot. Now look at that second free throw by Carl Malone. Extremely soft touch on both of them. And keep an eye on Carl Malone backing up as he shot. And you should never do that. you got to hang in there on the free throw and follow through. I, I was pretty good friends with Carl, actually. So I just walked by him and said. That the mailman doesn't deliver on Sunday. The mailman don't deliver on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and 
To this day, I think that's the greatest line in basketball. It's what, I, hey, man. And there would never be another male, man. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not going to argue. I just want to know, was that a, you know, like, my, my, my cousins are in the music industry, and so there's some things that come off the top of the head, and then there's some things that are pre-written. Was that no, a pre-written no, line? off the top of my head. Off the top of my head. You went freestyle right freestyle. there. Freestyle. When you, Bro, that was a big game. We yeah, it was the finals. That, that game. <laughs> when you said it, did you know you had gotten to him right away? Not till after he bricked them. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty is a, is, a, is a catalyst, you know. I mean, he's the one guy that could go two for ten and yet have a tremendous impact on the game. When Scotty first came here, he really didn't know where he was uh, at that time. But with inspiration from his superstar teammate, he improved by leaps and bounds. Scotty Pippen out with it. Pippen on the drive, left of the lane to the rack. Whoa! Michael challenging Pippen. Uh, it, it changed the whole character of our team. It made Pippen uh, bring his, elevate his game. I was established. He was kind of in the back scenes of things. And when his skills started to evolve and mature and people started to expect bigger things from him. Scotty was developing at that time by making him the director of our offense, kind of a point forward. With the ball in Scotty's hands, the Bulls finally had all their pieces in place. Embarking on their historic championship run, they would capture three consecutive titles. Chicago has dominated every game. The Chicago Bulls have three straight NBA championships. Ironically, Scotty gained the respect he had always deserved. I'm winding down battle, Scotty by Pippen. And yes, and MJ loves it. When I walked away from the game for two years, he was exposed to what I had to deal with, and he didn't have a shield in him. Uh, but Scotty flourished individually, and he became more of a mature player. And even Michael's return to the game did not diminish Scotty's newfound status. Hey, Michael on the run. MJ running, shovels, Pippen, yeah! With Michael and Scotty playing as equals, the Bulls would become champions once again and take their place in history as one of the greatest teams of all time. Look at, look at, skip the cross, Pippen the steal! Scotty saves it to Tony! He runs the Bulls again! The Bulls win! And now, no one doubted Scotty's contributions. I want to take my hat off to the two leaders on this team. Scotty and Michael. Michael, when he came back, said, point blank, this is Scotty's team. It's hard to take this MVP by myself. He's got to take half of it. I take the trophy, he may get the call. <laughs> you got MVP, though. Just up. Yeah, Scotty was one of my all-time favorite teammates because he, he was really a point guard in a, you know, 6'8" long-armed, uh, long-limbed body, uh, just with incredible athleticism. Uh, so to play with him uh, made the game so much easier for me. He would always uh, be looking for me, finding me open shots, uh, covering up for me defensively. You know, if I made a mistake, I knew he was always going to be there. One of the smartest, most unselfish players uh, I was ever around, and just a, a champion in every way. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and here are two new videos that I think you may enjoy. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.